All right, hi everyone, welcome back. We hope you were able to watch the video that we made for Wednesday night. If you didn't, no worries. It's still on YouTube. You can still access it through Facebook. Take time this week when you have a little extra time to do an additional Bible study. But if you were able to access it, we hope you enjoyed it. Mr. Renee and I had so much fun making that video for you guys, and we hope that you were able to learn from it. We hope that you were able to grow from it, and we hope the same thing for today's video. Today's video is going to come to you after Sunday morning's worship, so we hope that you were able to join us uh, through, for worship through the live stream. Uh, I know it's not the same as being together, but we are making the best of this difficult time, and we are excited to be with you again today. So, if you were able to watch it, or you are able to watch worship, why don't you take some time today after this video, or even just hit pause right now to talk about the different things that we learned during worship. It's so important after you learn something to make sure that you break it down or even share ideas with each other. For example, if me and Miss Renee were watching the same lesson, she may hear something different than I hear or I may hear something different than she hears and then we can talk about it and we can share ideas and we can all learn together. So I encourage you, if you have some free time, talk about what Mr. Isaac talked about during worship. What was his lesson about? What are some things that you can take from it? What are some things that you can learn from it? Before we get started today, I want you to we'll pause right now, go get your Bibles. Remember, you always need your Bibles for Bible time, and today you'll need a pen or a pencil and a piece of paper. So three things, all right? Remember last time we talked about trusting, obeying, and part of obeying was listening, okay? So listen, you need your Bible, you need a pen or a pencil, whatever you have, either one works, and a piece of paper. So if you want to hit pause right now, go get those things and then we'll get started. All right, do you have everything that you need? Awesome, we are ready to get started. But before we go any further, let's go to God in prayer. It's always important to recognize God for who he is. It's always important to stop and whatever you're doing, I encourage you to pray throughout your day, to find points in your day that you can just stop, recognize God for who He is, and take the opportunity that He's given us through prayer to talk to Him. So let's do that now. Can you bow your heads with me? Dear Heavenly Father, we thank You so much for this day that You've blessed us with. Father, I thank You so much for all of Your many blessings. Father, we thank You for allowing us to worship today with our families. Father, we thank You so much for the opportunity to be together. Father, we pray that although we're not allowed to be together as a congregation, Father, we pray that we're still looking for opportunities to stay connected to one another. Father, we're still looking for opportunities to stay connected through your word. Father, we pray that in all things we are constantly looking to you. Father, we are always trying to be more like Christ Jesus in the way that we talk, the way that we act, Father, the way that we treat other people. Father, that in all things people would see Christ Jesus in us. Father, we pray that as we go into this time of class, Father, we pray that we can focus on you, we can learn more about the Bible, and we can learn how to be better boys and girls. Father, we thank you so much, but we thank you most of all for Jesus. Father, we love you, and we praise you, and it's in your name I pray. Amen. Here we go. We're ready to get started. I may have a, a weird glare right now, but guess what? The sun is shining! We are so excited! We haven't seen the sun on Wednesday. The sun was beautiful. We're filming this on Thursday. I hope you guys were able to take advantage of the sunshine and go outside. It is always an awesome opportunity just to see God and His creation. To go outside, Mr. Renee talked about the wind. Uh, when we filmed the one about Jesus calming the storm, but it's always awesome to go out see go outside and to see how awesome God is in His creation. Now, before we go any further, we're going to do a little bit of a review. Okay, so who remembers what we talked about on Wednesday night? Does anyone remember? All right, if you remember, then you know that we talked about Jesus calming the storm, and there are two main points that we made. Number one, we need to trust. We need to trust in Christ Jesus and know that He will always take care of us, okay? He came to this earth. He did everything that He was supposed to do. He did everything that God asked Him to do. And listen, the second part was obey. Jesus obeyed God by doing everything that God needed Him to do. So even Jesus Christ, our Savior, 
He was obedient. And if Jesus was obedient, we too need to be obedient. We saw that Jesus was able to calm the storm and the winds and the waves obeyed him. We must also obey Jesus. And part of obeying Jesus is obeying our parents. Okay, I know that's sometimes easier said than done, but remember when we sang this little Christian light of mine and we said, all around my house, I'm going to let my light shine. Part of letting your light shine is listening to Jesus, and part of listening to Jesus is listening to your parents. I know that your parents will appreciate that so very much. Okay, so let's do our very best to always trust in Jesus and to always obey Jesus. All right, let's get started. Do you guys want to sing this morning? I know you do. All right, so what do we always start with? We always start with Jesus loves me. And how awesome is it that Jesus loves me and loves all of you? That is why we're doing this right now, because the love of Christ Jesus. So let's sing about that now, okay? Jesus loves me, this I know. For the Bible tells me so, little ones to him belong. They are weak, but he is strong. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. The Bible tells me so. You don't even have to ask. We're going to do it without the me. All right, you ready? Remember, instead of saying me, we'll just point, or we can point to someone else. But remember, when, we, when it comes to me, we don't say anything, okay? All right, here we go. Jesus loves this I know, for the Bible tells so. Little ones to him belong. They are weak, but he is strong. Yes, Jesus loves. Yes, Jesus loves. Yes, Jesus loves. The Bible tells so. Did it get you? Did it get you? All right. You learned from last time and it didn't get you this time. All right. So we're going to sing it again in Spanish. And what is so awesome, guys, is that the love of Christ transcends all languages. It has no borders. So it, the love of Christ Jesus is for everyone, okay? So we have to think about that and how we treat people and how we react to things, all right? If Jesus loves me and Jesus loves everyone else, then I too need to love everyone else. So let's sing it in Spanish just as a reminder to love everyone else, no matter where they come from, no matter what their background is, okay? Cristo me ama, bien lo sé. Su palabra me hace ver que los niños son de aquel quien es nuestro amigo fiel. Si Cristo me ama, si Cristo me ama, si Cristo me ama, la Biblia dice así. Awesome job! You guys did a fantastic job! If you're still having trouble remembering it, just hit pause, rewind it, listen to it again, and keep practicing it. The reason that we know it without the words is because we have practiced it over and over again. So keep practicing, okay? Alright, let's sing a song called Deep and Wide. Do y'all know that song? Uh, awesome! Let's sing it. You ready? Deep and Wide Deep and wide, there's a fountain flowing deep and wide. Deep and wide, deep and wide, there's a fountain flowing deep and wide. Hmm, and wide, hmm, and wide, there's a fountain flowing hmm, and wide. Hmm, and wide, hmm, and wide, there's a fountain flowing hmm, and wide. Hmm, and hmm, hmm, and hmm, there's a fountain flowing, hmm, and hmm. Hmm, and hmm, hmm, and hmm, there's a fountain flowing, hmm, and hmm. Here we go. Hmm, and hmm, hmm, and hmm, 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 and hmm. Hmm, and hmm, 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 hm
You guys are wonderful hummers. That was awesome. I loved it. All right. That was so much fun. Let's sing about this little Christian light of mine. And guys, when we sing this song, I want you to really think about how you can let your light shine, okay? It needs to be so much more than just a song. It needs to be something that we are trying to do every single day by being good boys and girls, by listening to our parents, by doing what Jesus would want us to do and living like Christ Jesus, okay? So let's make it more than just a song. Let's make it something we're trying to do every single day, okay? All right. Do you have your Christian lights ready? All right, if you got them ready, let's sing. This little Christian light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. This little Christian light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. This little Christian light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine, oh yeah. Hide it under a bushel, no, I'm going to let it shine. Hide it under a bushel, no, I'm going to let it shine. Hide it under a bushel, no! I'm gonna let it shine, let it shine, let it shine, let it shine, oh yeah. Won't let Satan it out, I'm gonna let it shine. Won't let Satan it out, I'm gonna let it shine. Won't let Satan it out, I'm gonna let it shine, let it shine, let it shine, let it shine, oh yeah. Let's do all around your house, okay? All around my house, I'm gonna let it shine. All around my house, I'm gonna let it shine. All around my house, I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine, oh yeah. Let's let our light shine this week, okay? Make sure you do that. All right, the next song that we're going to sing is the Lord's Army. So you can't sing the Lord's Army sitting down. So if you're sitting down, stand up. If you're already standing, awesome. You're ready, okay? Here we go. I may never march in the infantry, ride in the cavalry, shoot the artillery. I may never fly o'er the enemy, but I'm in the Lord's Army. Yes, sir! I'm in the Lord's army, yes sir. I'm in the Lord's army, yes sir. I may never march in the infantry, ride in the cavalry, shoot the artillery. I may never fly o'er the enemy, but I'm in the Lord's army, yes sir. All right, so, oh, hold on. What was that? Did you say cowboy style? Man, I almost read your mind because I almost just jumped straight into that. Perfect. Let's do the cowboy style. Let's have some fun with it, all right? You wranglers, cowboys, and cowgirls ready? All right. I may never march in the infantry, ride in the cavalry, shoot the artillery. I may never fly o'er the enemy, but I'm in the Lord's army. Yeehaw! I'm in the Lord's army, yee-haw! I'm in the Lord's army, yee-haw! I may never march in the infantry, ride in the cavalry, shoot the artillery. I may never fly o'er the enemy, but I'm in the Lord's army, yee-haw! Alright, you guys are doing an awesome job singing these songs. I love singing with you guys. I wish that we could all do it together, but right now this is perfect. I'm having a great time. I hope that you guys are having a great time, but remember, alright, it's not about just having a great time. It's about listening to the words that we're singing and making sure that we're paying attention and making sure that we're praising God through these words, okay? Let's sing two more songs. The next song that we're going to sing is about a foolish man and a wise man, okay? Now, pay very close attention to this song because this is actually what we're talking about today, okay? We're talking about building our house on the sand and building our house on the rock and which one we should do, whether we are the wise man or the foolish man. And we know we want to be the wise man, but let's really think about it, okay? Let's sing this song together. Are you ready? All right. The foolish man built his house upon the sand. The foolish man built his house upon the sand. The foolish man built his house upon the sand. And the rains came tumbling down. Oh, I can't hear you better sing a louder. Oh, the rains came down and the floods came up. 
The rains came down and the floods came up. The rains came down and the floods came up. And the foolish man's house went sack. But the wise man built his house upon the rock. The wise man built his house upon the rock. The wise man built his house upon the rock, and the rains came tumbling down. Oh, the rains came down and the floods came up. The rains came down and the floods came up. The rains came down and the floods came up, and the wise man's house stood firm. So, build your house on the Lord Jesus Christ. So, build your house on the Lord Jesus Christ. So, build your house on the Lord Jesus Christ. And the blessings will come tumbling down. Oh, the blessings come down as the prayers go up. The blessings come down as the prayers go up. The blessings come down as the prayers go up. So build your house on the Lord Jesus Christ. Awesome, guys. You guys are doing a great job. That song is so awesome. I love that song. And we're going to talk a little bit more about it, okay? First, we always sing the hippo song to end us out, okay? We're going to get all our energy out with this song. So let's get ready. Are you ready? All right. You got to get your arms up to be ready, okay? We'll do it normal first, and then, of course, we'll do it fast, okay? You ready? Here we go. In the beginning God made the seas, and the forests filled with trees. He made the mountains up so high. At the top he placed the sky. Fingerprints were everywhere, just to show how much he cared. In the middle he had some fun. He made a hip with that weighed a ton. Hip, 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 hippopotamus. Hip, hip, hooray, God made all of us. Hip, 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 hippopotamus. Hip, hip, hooray, God made all of us. Faster, you said. Couldn't think of anything better. Here we go. Ready? Now, I have a question. How many of you did I fool with that last one with that little head start? Did I get anyone? No one? <laughs> you guys are that good I didn't get anyone? Oh, man. I, I thought I'd at least get one person. All right. Let's see if you guys are ready. You ready? Arms up. <clears throat> Here we go. In the beginning, I made the seas and the forest filled with trees. He made the mountains up so high. At the top, he placed the sky. Fingerprints are everywhere, just to show how much he can. In the middle, he had some fun. He made a hip with that weight a ton. Hip, 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 hippopotamus. Hip, hip, hooray, God made all of us. Hip, 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 hippopotamus. Hip, hip, hooray, God made all of us. Woo! <laughs> let's catch our breath and let's sit down, okay? All right, you guys did an awesome job singing, but now it's time to go into our Bible class, okay? So let's find ourselves a seat, all right? Let's get out our Bibles, all right? And let's make sure that we are focused and we are ready to talk about God, okay? Are you guys ready? Awesome, I'm ready too. All right, now that we've caught our breath, it was funny, Mr. Nay and I said, we should come up with a Bible class cardio. All those songs, it gets us so excited, but it also kind of makes us tired, all right? But now that we're ready, we've caught our breath, let's talk about God and let's go into our Bible time, okay? So I will be in Matthew chapter 7. If you guys turn over there with me in Matthew chapter 7, starting in verse 24, okay? I'll give you some time to find it, and if you need to hit pause to find it together, that's fine. But we'll be in Matthew chapter 7, starting in verse 24, okay? So when you get there, let's read it together. Everyone then who hears these words of mine, whose words, remember, whose words are we hearing? These are the words of Jesus, okay? So this is Jesus talking, all right? So we need to know that. Everyone then who hears these words of mine are the words of Jesus and does them, all right? Did you hear that? And does them will be like a wise man who built his house on the rock. All right, so let's stop right there. Did you notice what he said? He said, hears them and does them, okay? So, when we're talking about being good listeners, just like we talked about in our last lesson, it's not just about hearing them, it's also about doing them, okay? Part of being good listeners is not just hearing something and then doing nothing about it. Part of being good listeners 
is hearing something and doing what you're supposed to do. Okay? So we have to remember that. It's not just about hearing it, it's about doing it. We know that faith without works is what? It's dead. It's useless. Okay? So if we hear something, especially the words of Christ Jesus, then we must also do them. Okay? So whoever hears these words of mine and does them will be like a wise man who built his house on the rock. All right? And that's where we want to build our house. We want to build our house on the rock. All right? And the rain fell and the floods came. So I want you to imagine the hardest rainstorm you've ever seen. You can't even see five feet in front of you. The rain is just pounding. The floods came and the winds blew. Now, last time we talked about strong winds, right? So imagine all this rain, all this wind, and these big floods and beat on that house. So we have the rain, we have the floods, we have the wind. It's all hitting this house, but it did not fall because it had been founded on the rock. Guys, it didn't fall because it had the proper foundation. And we'll talk about that in just a second. And everyone who hears these words of mine and does not do them, so we hear them, but we don't do them. Listen to what it says. Will be like a foolish man who built his house on the sand. And the rain fell, and the floods came, and the winds blew and beat against that house. And it what? And it went smack. It fell. Okay? It couldn't stand up to the wind or the rain or the floods. It fell. And great was the fall of it. So let's talk about a foundation. All right? A foundation. If you're building a house, all right, I don't build houses for a living, but I would most people would tell you, okay, that the foundation is the most important part, okay? Because everything else, every single part of that house is gonna sit on the foundation. And if you have a weak foundation, you have a weak house. But if you have a strong foundation, you can have a strong house. Because everything sits on top of that foundation. The foundation determines what type of house it's going to be. So let's talk about sand and let's talk about rocks. How many of you have ever been in the sand before? Probably all of you, whether it be a sandbox or the beach, wherever you have found sand. Okay? You know that when you what? When you walk in sand, it shifts, right? It moves, all right? Sand just kind of goes wherever it's pushed. There's no nothing firm about it. How many of you have ever built a sand castle? Yeah. Those are a lot of fun. I love going to the beach. I love building sand castles. But when how many of you have built a sand castle and as soon as you got it done and it was just perfect, you put a lot of time in it and it just looked great and before you could say, "Hey mom, hey dad, look, what happened? A big wave came and just knocked it down because it didn't have a good foundation, right? Sand just kind of uh, shifts around, all right? It's not solid. But I want you to think about rocks, all right? I want you to think of a big boulder, all right? Have you ever been hiking before and got to stand on a big boulder? Did that boulder shift? No, it didn't shift at all. It was firm. It has different principles, okay? It has different qualities, qualities that make it firm, that make it hard, and if it's big enough, it's immovable. It's not going anywhere. So we want our foundation to be firm, immovable, unshakable, where nothing can knock it down, nothing can shake it. So how do we build that foundation, right? How do we do it? It's not just enough to know that we need it. We need to know how that we can build it, okay? So how many of you have ever been to a construction site? Anyone ever helped your mom and dad, your grandfather, whoever, build something? The majority of the time, if we're building something like a house, what do we wear? We wear a tool belt, right? We have tools in our tool belt. So let's talk about some of the tools that can be in your tool belt to help you build this foundation, okay? But first, we need to know what our foundation is built on, okay? So let's look on what we're building our foundation on, and then let's look what's in our tool belt. So we're going to fasten our tool belt, but we're going to look first and know what our foundation is built on. If you have your Bibles, which I know you do, go to 1 Corinthians chapter 3 with me. Turn over, it's in the New Testament, all right? Turn over with me to 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians 
chapter 3, starting in verse 10. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, starting in verse 10. All right, if you need to hit pause so you guys can find it, that's fine. But we're going to jump into it. What are we building our foundation on? Or the better question for us as Christians is, who are we building our foundation on? Okay, 1 Corinthians chapter 3, starting in verse 10. According to the grace of God given to me, like a skilled master builder. That's what we want you guys to be, a skilled master builder. Not about houses, but your faith. We're talking about building a foundation of your faith. And we want to give you the tools and the tool belt to be master builders of your faith. Okay? Master builder, I laid a foundation. We're talking about foundations, right? And the foundation is what everything rests upon. We must have a strong foundation. I laid a foundation and someone else is building upon it. Let each one take care how he builds upon it. For no one can lay a foundation. Listen. No one can lay a foundation other than that which is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Christ Jesus must be our foundation. We must build everything on Christ Jesus. When we talk about living like Christ Jesus, acting like Christ Jesus, talking about Christ, talking about Christ Jesus, and talking like Christ Jesus, this is what we're talking about. Laying that foundation. Laying that foundation. Second passage, go with me. It's a little bit further over. It's in the book of Ephesians. Okay? Ephesians chapter 2, starting in verse 19. Ephesians chapter 2, starting in verse 19. If you need to, again, if you need to hit pause, hit pause, but we're going to jump in. Ephesians chapter 2, starting in verse 19. So then you are no longer strangers and aliens, but you are fellow citizens with the saints and members of the household of God, built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Christ Jesus himself being the cornerstone. Now, what is a cornerstone? All right? In biblical times when they were building stones, the cornerstone was the most important piece. Everything else was going to be built and based on the cornerstone. Christ Jesus must be our foundation. We must build everything on Christ Jesus. So, who is our foundation? Jesus Christ is our foundation, right? Because Jesus Christ is going to be what keeps us standing when the waves come, when the rains fall, when the winds blow, when everything is crazy around us, Christ Jesus is who is going to keep us standing tall, okay? So, you have your tool belts on, all right? Let's talk about some tools in your tool belt. Number one, prayer. Prayer is one of the most powerful tools that you have in your tool belt. Christ Jesus wants to hear from you. We must pray to God. We can pray to Jesus, okay? We must pray for the things that we need. Right now, some of the things that we need is for sickness, right? A lot of people are sick. We can pray for the sick, all right? So one of the greatest tools that you have in your tool belt is prayer. Another great tool that you have in your tool belt is Bible study. Things that we're doing right now, talking about God, all right? So in your tool belt, you have Bible study, all right? Another tool that you have in your tool belt is fellowshipping with one another, being with fellow Christians. Now, I know that that's kind of difficult to do right now, but videos like this, calling your friends, calling your neighbors, talking to them, and checking on them is a great thing to do, all right? Here's the deal, though, guys, all right? If you went to a job site and you were getting ready to start building and you didn't have any of your tools or you didn't know how to use your tools, they wouldn't be any good, right? Would any of you go to a work site without a hammer, or without a tape measure? No, absolutely not. It doesn't make sense, okay? So, when we are building our foundation on Christ Jesus, we must be using our tools to make our foundation as strong as possible, okay? Take these opportunities that you have at home. There's not as much to do right now. Take these opportunities to pray more. Strengthen your prayer life. Read more. Read your Bible as much as you possibly can. Remember one of the challenges that we gave you last week was to read your Bible as much as possible. Okay? Use those tools in your tool belt so that you 
can build a foundation on Christ Jesus so that you can come to know Christ Jesus. And when the storms come and the winds and the, the winds rage and the rain pours, your foundation, your house can stand firm on Christ Jesus. Guys, thank you so much for being wonderful listeners. I've loved our Bible time with you just like last time. We're going to transition for a second. Miss Renee's got some really fun activities for you guys to do. All right. Thank you guys so much for listening. Hi guys, I'm here with another special guest. We got to meet, uh, speak to Scamper and Scout yesterday. Some of you people that aren't in class with them got to meet them for the first time. But we have another guest that I forgot to bring out. But guess what? I think he was taking a nap. Were you taking a nap? Yeah, he likes to nap. If you don't know this guy, this is Mr. Ted E. Bear. Mr. Bear likes to hang out in the smallest kids' classrooms because it's nice and quiet and he can take lots of naps. He loves his naps. The only thing he likes more than his nap is Bible time. And that's why you came out today, wasn't it? Yes, you heard Mr. Peyton singing songs about the Bible and reading from the Bible. And that got you excited, didn't it? Mm, I know it did. What's that? That's so sweet. I'll tell the kids. So kids, Mr. Bear wants me to tell you that he has not forgotten all of the things that we've been teaching him. He gets his Bible out every day, and he loves his Bible. Why do we love the Bible? Because God gave it to us. And how do we treat the Bible? We pat it with gentle hands. We're not rough with it. And he's been learning that from you guys, and he appreciates that. So are we going to have some fun today? Oh, what's that? Oh, oh, I think Mr. B are you getting sleepy again? Oh, Mr. Bear, did all that singing make you sleepy? Uh, well, Mr. Bear might take a nap, but Peyton and I are going to have some fun with you kids, okay? Let's put you down for a nap. All right. All right, kids, so we're back with Mr. Peyton, and you remember the game we played the last time we were together. Well, this time, instead of rolling the dice, we're going to just do two that we didn't do last time just so that we can have some fun. All right, so the verse that we're reading from was from our Bible story today. It's Matthew 7, verse 25. And the rain fell, and the floods came, and the winds blew and beat on that house, but it did not fall because it had been founded on the rock. That's a mouthful. Do we that think is, we can do that? I think so. I think okay. we can make it happen, all right? You okay. guys are going to do great at this, And hopefully right? uh, Mr. Isaac will put that verse down yeah, there or yeah. open up your Bible and read it straight from God's Absolutely. Word, okay? So the first way we're going to try, we're going to pretend we rolled a two. Now, when you're playing this at home, just roll it as many times as you want to until you've read it every way you want to read this verse. Absolutely. Remember, practice is how we get better. Same thing with Jesus Loves Me in Spanish. Practice. Same thing with learning Bible verse. Practice. All right? So right. just practice, practice, practice. So we're going to pretend we rolled a two, and two is scared. We're going to be scared. Oh, that storm right. is scaring us. Okay, all right, are we ready? here we go. And, and the, the rains fell, fell and, and the, the floods, floods came, and, and the winds blew and beat on that house, but it did not fall because it had been founded on the rock. rock. That was fun, right? <laughs> that helps us remember, okay? So the next one we're going to do, we're going to act like we rolled it, and we're going to do a song voice, all right? So Mr. and I, and Mr. And I talked, and I think we're going to do something like uh, Frozen's Let It Go and just yeah. kind of have fun production. with it. Big production. Big production, all right? <laughs> Are you guys ready? We hope we're ready. Here okay. we go. And, and the, the rains fell, and, and the floods came, and the, the winds blew, blew and beat on that house. house. But, but it did not fall, because it, it had been founded, founded on the rock. Mr. Ned is fantastic. <laughs> I just had to stop and watch. It was so good. All right. You guys keep oh, practicing. Man. You guys are going to do a great job. All right. <laughs> oh, while we got you here, Peyton, there's one more game Perfect. that I want to teach you how to play for when you've got time with your family other than right now. Awesome. We're just going to show you how it's done. Because what we're thinking of is the everyone who hears these words of mine and does them. Peyton was telling us how important it is not to just hear, but to hear 
and do. God wants us to hear his words and then do something about them. So we're going to play a game. I'm going to let Peyton go grab a piece of paper. And you can, if you want to sit at the table or if you want to do it here, you can do it here. All right. So, Everyone go get your pen and paper. If you need to hit pause, you can do that. Everyone go get your pen and paper. That's right. So hit pause. Parents, I'm going to let you know what the instructions are going to be. Kids, they've got their paper and their pencil. I'm going to read some instructions. I'm only going to read them one time. So that's why it's so important for you to listen well. Don't talk while I'm reading the instruction. Just listen and then do what I say. You're going to draw what I say. I'm going to count to five with my fingers, parents. And if I get ready to read the next instruction and your child's not ready yet, just hit pause and give them time to draw. I know everybody draws at a different pace, but we're taping this, so I'm going to try to be quick. All right, number one, draw a shape on your paper that is larger than your hand. What kind of shape? Could be a circle, could be a diamond, could be a square, bigger than your hand. Okay, parents, kids, it's time for instruction number two. Draw one big eye and one small eye inside your shape. Okay, hopefully you've got that done. Instruction number three, draw a wavy line for a mouth. Okay, next instruction. Draw pointy teeth that touch the wavy line. How many teeth? That's up to you. Okay, this next one might take a little longer, so I'm going to count to ten. Draw two legs and shoes. Okay, here's another instruction. You're going to draw two arms and fingers at the end of those arms. How many fingers? That's up to you. Okay, this one's a little shorter, so we're going to go back down to five. Draw a topper on your creature, like horns or ears or a hat. Or maybe some crazy hair. You choose. I hear Peyton drawing, so I'm going to give you a few more seconds. Okay, last instruction. Draw a pattern on your creation. Polka dots, stripes, zigzags, it's up to you. you have something that kind of looks like either mine or Peyton's. Let's get a little closer <laughs> where they can see. Each of our creations are different, just like a lot of God's creation. We're all different, but there's a pattern there. And hopefully you listened to the instructions and you did what you were supposed to do so that we have different creations, but we use the same pattern. Good job, Peyton. That was so much Thank fun. You. I loved it. Thank you. <laughs> so, in addition to that drawing game that we just did, there are some other exercises that you can do to help improve your listening skills. You can play the blindfold game, where you blindfold a member of your family and then try to get them through the house. So they have to have really good listening skills and you have to give good directions. Another thing you can play is the end of this word is the beginning of the next word. You can do it with regular words or Bible words. For example, if I say the word salvation, it started with an S, but it ends with an N. So, Peyton, I'm going to pass it to you. And do you know a word that starts with an N? I do. I would say Noah. Noah. Okay, that ends with a H. Good job. So now, if it comes back to me, I start a word with an H. And I'm going to do Herod. 
the king that's in the Bible. So you can do this as long as you want to with your family. And if you've got older kids that are really good at writing and want to practice spelling, they can write out your list of words. And that way that'll help them with their spelling. Okay, so that's our hearing and doing. Let's look at the next part of that verse. Building on the rock. I hope you live in a place where you can get outside and explore and go on a rock hunt. God has created so many wonderful things and rocks are just another one of his great creations. Rocks come in all different shapes and sizes. They're different widths and thicknesses. Some of them are really, really heavy that you can't hardly lift them and some are little. So grab some rocks and you can do things at home like paint the rocks. If you paint the rocks, you can put them in the garden and they look pretty neat. If you don't feel like getting paint out, you can paint with water. Rocks look a little bit different when they're dry versus when they're wet. And sometimes you can find neat colors in the rocks that you don't see when they're dry. Another thing that I did is I took these rocks and I traced around them. If they're little, you can do it on paper. If they're big, you can do it on the concrete with um, chalk, sidewalk chalk. And then let a friend or a family member take these pieces and try to find the puzzle piece that matches. And you've got your very own puzzle. If you're lucky enough to have sand, you can go play in the sand. You can do things like write in it, get it wet, and play with cookie cutters in the sand. And if you're lucky enough to have both at your house, you can always act out the story and have a house that's built on rock and a house that's built on sand, and you can make the rains come down and the floods come up, right? And you can watch that house go splat, all right? Now, if you don't have sand or rocks at your house, I've got a couple of tricks of things that you can make to kind of help you get through this. The first one I made is a sedimentary rock. That's a mouthful. A sedimentary rock is a rock that has been formed over years from different things. What an amazing creation that God has planned for us. Sediment is little bitty pieces of rock and little bitty pieces of shell and some sand and things. I am making a sedimentary rock that you can eat. So first, I've got my sediment. Little pieces of crackers and cookies and cereal that I have crushed up in bags. Then you need something to hold it all together. Now in real sedimentary rocks, God uses things like decaying matter and mud and water, rainwater, and it holds all that rock together. I made my own binding material by using some butter and some confectioner sugar. The last thing that God uses to make sedimentary rock is pressure. you got to squish all that stuff together until it becomes a rock. And God does that. So that's what I did in this bowl. I sprinkled some sediment. I sprinkled in some binding. And then I took a piece of plastic and I pushed it down and pushed it down and pushed it down until it forms whatever it's in. It's best to do this with a small container. Look at how it turned out, guys. Let me know if you can see this. See all those layers? Just like the real sedimentary rocks. I've got a layer of cookie, a layer of cereal, a layer of colored marshmallows, and another layer of cereal. So hopefully you can make this at home. You can make a sweet one. You can make a salty one. Make one, let all the kids make their own and see how many different layers you can find. But guess what, parents? <laughs> Just because we make something that's edible, doesn't mean that you're going to love the way it tastes, but guess what? That's okay. Don't throw it away. Turn it right back into a science lesson. That sedimentary rock, just like real sedimentary rock, is a little more porous. It's not as hard as some other rock that God has created, and it can be eroded with water. And you can show the kids just how easy that is to do with sedimentary rock by putting that snack underwater and watch how all that sediment kind of washes away. So some fun for you guys to have. Another thing that I have made, <laughs> you may not love this as much as we do. You find it all over the internet. It's called lots of crazy names. It's called Gak, it's called Goop, it's called Ooblek. But in my house, it's called that really cool stuff that we made that's got cornstarch in it, okay? <laughs> cornstarch, if you have cornstarch at your house, it's a wonderful thing for science experiments. Cornstarch is used to thicken things up like gravy and pie fillings. But we're going to use it to make the most magical stuff. Look, it looks very liquidy. Can you see the liquid? It's two parts cornstarch to one part water. Okay, so watch what happens when I punch this. 
It's like a rock. Of course, I'm making a little bit of mess. You might want to do this outside. It's like a rock when I hit it. But look, if I'm soft, it's like liquid. Okay? And watch this. I pick it up. Oh, let's see if I can do this. <laughs> can I do this on the table, Peyton? If I pick it up and play with it, look, it's a solid. It's like a rock. But as soon as I stop playing with it, it becomes a liquid again. So punch it. It's a solid. Barely touch it. It's a liquid. Awesome stuff. Spend some time outside playing with this. I promise. If it, it might make a mess, but it's so worth it. Kids love this stuff. I'm going to wash up my hands, but... Speaking of this stuff that feels like a rock and it also feels like a liquid, it reminds me of that song, On Christ the Solid Rock I Stand, All Other Ground is Sinking Sand. This is like quicksand. So I'm going to show you the signs for the chorus of that song as soon as I clean up my hands. Ew! <laughs> okay, guys, so I've cleaned off my hands and now I'm going to use them to show you a few more signs. I hope you're enjoying this as much as I do. I think it's so neat to talk with your hands sometimes. So we're going to do the chorus of On Christ the Solid Rock I Stand, All Other Ground is Sinking Sand. That's all we're going to learn. And you as a family can actually sing the verses. They're a little more difficult, so I figure that might be something you want to look up together as a family and sing the verses, and then when you get to the chorus, you can sign. So if you'll remember, we learned the last time the sign for Christ, where his hands were pierced. On Christ, the solid rock. It's almost kind of like our wise man built his house on the rock, right? You've got a fist, another fist. It comes down on it. It's solid like a rock. So on Christ, the solid rock I stand, all other ground, just flat ground, is sinking sand. Look what sand does. You play with it. It sprinkles right out of your hands and through your fingers. It's so soft, okay? So that's it. On Christ, the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand. All other ground is sinking sand. Okay, so Peyton's going to lead us in that song. Are you guys ready? All right, we're going to sing it together. Uh, we're doing the signs. We'll practice the signs one more time after we sing it, and then we'll sing it together again. All right, ready? On Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand. All of the ground is sinking sand. All right, you ready? Miss Renee's going to show you the signs one more time, and then we'll do, sing it again. Okay, so it's on Christ. Christ. The solid rock. Solid. All other ground is sinking sand. Okay? You ready? On Christ the solid rock I stand, all of the ground is sinking sand, all of the ground is sinking sand. Awesome! You guys did a great job. You guys are learning so much. We hope you guys are enjoying these videos. The most important part, remember guys, is that we're learning more about God, and it's not just about learning, it's about doing, okay? There's that saying that says, you know better. All right, and since we now know better, it is time to now do better. It's not just enough to listen, but we also must be doing. All right, let's go to God in prayer, and then we'll end this video. All right, dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for this day that you've blessed us with. Father, thank you so much for allowing us this opportunity to learn more about you. Father, we pray that in all things we are good listeners, but also that we are good doers. Father, the things that we listen, the things that we study, Father, that we are willing to do those things. Father, that we can live in a way that would bring honor and glory to your name. And Father, that we live in a way that would be like Christ Jesus. Father, we pray that you'd be with all those who are sick, all those who are suffering. Father, please bless them. Father, thank you so much for allowing us to be here. We thank you so much for Christ Jesus. Father, we love you and we praise you. In your name I pray. Amen. Bye, guys. Thank you guys so much for being here. We'll see you later, okay? Yeah.